get everything set and ready to go. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Hey, everybody. I know that we're, we're waiting for attendees to file in, but I'll, I'll do my spiel real quick. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So welcome to tonight's special Robocon panel. We have a lot of really awesome stuff lined up. Um, I'm Nat, pronouns she, they, and I'm just a quick representative from the Robocon team just saying hello and to let you know that we got a lot of interesting little pop-up events that we got going on here. Um, so to be sure to check out robocon.org um, for more of these panels that we're hoping to line up throughout the year so we can still be together while we're apart. So, all right, I'm going to hand it off to you, Anthony, and your and your awesome squad for this conversation. Yeah, we, we, we actually have the Justice League here, which is really awesome. Um, uh, special treat. But hi, everyone. I'm Anthony. I'm the moderator tonight. And uh, I am very, very excited to be able to talk about uh, something that I frankly never thought I'd be able to talk about at Robocon. I thought I'd be, we'd be able to dream about it at Robocon, but never talk about it as an actual panel. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League is finally out. And, you know, I have a feeling, yes, yes, I have a feeling that uh, we could talk about this uh, into tomorrow. So I guess... Um, I guess we'll just dive right in, guys. Um, you know, this was this was something that, after a um, let's just copy, let's just be blunt, lukewarm uh, theatrical release. Um, uh, as long as the um, uh, after a lukewarm theatrical release, uh, you know, we've been hoping for this to to actually uh, come out, and uh, the hype was building, and we finally got to see it a few a, few, a little while ago, and. I guess my first question that I like to throw out there for, for the group is, did it live up to the hype and why or why not? Take it away. All right, I'm gonna start this off by saying absolutely. Absolutely yes, oh my God. First off, like just this whole movement, this whole like release the Snyder Cut movement, um, just being led to believe that, you know, it didn't exist. It, there was, there was no possible way that this cut could ever exist. And then we finally got it. And I, 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 would, I would, in my personal opinion, say that it, it may be over-delivered in terms of length, but in terms of like character development, in terms of just absolute spectacle, in terms of just giving the fans what they had been expecting in terms of tone, um, I think it landed. I think, I think all of those things absolutely uh, uh, just delivered in terms of what we were expecting out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think I forgot to uh, introduce everyone. So why don't we, for, before we ju jump out of the next slide, why don't we go around and just uh, like everyone introduce each other and, and, and everything. Uh, I already said who I am. Uh, Justin, I think technically you can finish oh, up by introducing okay. yourself formally in the right. um hi i'm justin uh, uh from just incredible cosplay and also from uh Sangram, new york uh, a local comic book shop of which i am the comics uh manager i i run the comic portion of the shop and you know i do all the ordering and you know distributing and reading of the comics so and appraising and you know all that other like fun cool kevin smith stuff I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, there, who's next? Next. Oh, uh, 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 Brian, why don't you go next? Oh, oh okay. Uh, my name is Brian Daniel. Um, occasional podcaster, uh, just major fan and geek all around. Uh, I, I just, I, 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 I don't really have anything that. <clears throat> currently doing in the geek world that uh would uh that i you know other than just watching movies reading comics and just being who i have been for the last like 35 40 years <laughs> it's like um but uh yeah and it's 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 great to be on another panel yeah 
uh, 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 Christina, you want to introduce yourself next? Hi, uh, I'm Christina from Crisis Cosplay. I um, good nerd fangirl, just cosplay. I make cake. That's that good. You know, just good cake. doing the duo cosplay with Justin. <laughs> awesome. And baking cakes. And, and cake. Yeah. And cake. Always good. And uh, last but not least. Hi, I'm Kat. Um, I am a lifelong nerd because I saw Star Wars in the movie theater in 1976. That's awesome. Um, I'm old. Um, but I, uh, I am. Uh, I usually run the costume contest at Robocon, um, and they keep throwing me on these panels when I say yes. So here I am. There you go. Awesome. So uh, <laughs> now we got the formal introductions. <laughs> over there. Uh, <laughs> I saw a comment. I'm like, oh no, I forgot to in uh, introduce yeah. um, So yeah, we're we're, on, we're kind of unpacking. Uh, did this live up to the hype, and why or why not? Justin, thank you for your perspective. Uh, who would like to go next? Who would like to to weigh in? I think. Uh, uh, go ahead, Christina. Well, the, can I weigh in on the thing that I was going to talk about or the question you asked? Oh, uh, what were you going to talk about? Well, the, the, fir the thing I wanted to talk about was the plot because mm. the original cut, the Joss Whedon cut, cut so much important information out that while we were watching the Snyder cut, I was like, huh? where was that? Because at the end of Batman versus Superman, when Bats goes to Lex Luthor's cell and Lex is like, the bell has been rung. I'm like, what bell? They don't explain that significance in the Joss Whedon cut. The bell is literally Superman dying. Because you, obviously Stefan Wolf shows up because the mother box is on Earth, but we know little about as to why or what called him there. It was Superman dying. It, within the first 30 seconds of the Snyder Cut, they, they tell us the, with his super scream yeah, that he woke the mother boxes the up. Oh, and I was beautiful. like, this is very important. Why were we not told about this in the other version? I was not confused. I was so confused in the Joss Whedon Cut. I was like, what is happening and why? Like, they barely even touched base on Dark Side in the Whedon. And Wonder Woman gives us, like, what almost a 10 minute speech about dark side having come to earth forever ago and leaving the mother boxes behind and then losing track of them and we didn't explain none of that to anybody so if you go into that movie not knowing a lot about any of like the mother box stuff or dark side or what's going on you're not going to understand why stefan wolf is even here right. so the snyder cut filled so many gaps for me obviously i know enough about the plot thanks to justin and thanks to the fact that i have the access to all the books and the information i have but i was just entranced with the entire thing the whole four hours and i was just standing ovation in my own living room over how beautiful it was i cried a lot all but i cannot true. tell you how much how disappointed I was with the Whedon cut and how much they just took out that was important. And I'm like, this, that was just a disappointment. And again, I liked Whedon's version because it, it was a superhero movie. I like all superhero movies. Like, obviously they all have their flaws, but there was so much missing that needed to be there. And now I truly understand what the whole release the Snyder Cut was over the last couple of years. And I'm so glad that we were given this very important representation of the Justice League because Zack Snyder deserved to have that. I think we deserve to have that. And it was just, I'm glad that we got it because we needed it. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that sounds like a yes to your question. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that sounds, that sounds uh, very much like a resounding yes to your question. Yeah, yeah. Nothing ambiguous there. No. <laughs> you know, it's no. like um, it's like we uh, you know, the, the original version was like, you you go into it expecting a lot, you walk out, it was like, okay, this isn't what I ordered. It wasn't bad, but it, I ordered, you know. A really good it's steak. Like I didn't order. What did you get from ordering on Wish? Uh, I, yeah, I didn't really get what I ordered. Um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting too because uh, 
I will let you uh, let the other two of you guys weigh in, but I think it was interesting too because you uh, when you watch a lot of movies and you especially if you're a fan of a lot of movies, uh, director's cuts come out. Uh, most of the time, when you get a director's cut, it's that it's just that there's new scenes, there's maybe tweaked scenes. Uh, it's a little bit longer, but the story is basically the same. The movie is the same. The soundtrack yes. might be a little different, but essentially it's the same movie. You're just seeing a little bit more of it. Uh, this was not the same movie. This was a completely different movie. I mean, from like you said, from this first moment, uh, the, the, the screams, the context, uh, not even hitting us over the head with the context, but just delivering the context and building upon it. And I, I guess, uh, uh, Brian Cat, I'd love to hear just kind of what your initial impressions were in, in, uh, in terms of did it live up to the hype and, you know, kind of what were the, uh, what were the takeaways when you first saw it? I, I'm going to put it, uh, uh, may I go? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's your turn. I, I'm going to, I'm going to equate it to, to me seeing the Lord of the Rings films in the theaters and enjoying those movies. Mm -hmm. And then seeing the extended versions yeah. mm -hmm. and never wanting to see the theatrical versions again because oh, those what? films were not the complete story. And for me to not want to watch the complete story doesn't make sense. Why am I going to waste my time and do this again? Right. Yep. I want to see the complete story. Yes, it's going to take me 12 hours to get through it, but... <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the crap out of it, and I'm going to get exactly what I sat down for originally in the first place. Yeah. Now, I, 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 again, I, I watched both versions with my daughter, and we, I, I, I basically watch everything, because <laughs> they, they, they're probably some of the best film critics I've ever seen, and, and they are also funny as hell. So it, it just makes everything enjoyable. Like even if it's a bad, ex not a bad experience, but even if the movie isn't that great, I'm enjoying it because we're like cracking jokes at it and everything else. So, but when we watched the first Justice League, it was, you know, it was okay. We're in the theaters, I'm, it's two hours. We need to be in, we need to be out and enjoyed it. So it was just like, yeah, 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 it moved. But I, I, the whole time in the back of my, of my head, I'm like, well, that, that, that doesn't make sense because we just skipped. How did we get the, why are we heat? There was a lot of me doing that in my head while I was watching it. And, it, and although I was enjoying it, my brain was just going, nah, th th this doesn't make sense. And, and like, and I, and I understood, it was, is it pretty much the same stuff that, uh, uh, that Christine said, but it's just, it, it, when I saw the Snyder cut, like the, 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 the cinematography, the, the score, mm -hmm. Uh, the the, uh, uh, the emotion and I'm one of those people that have understood where Snyder was going from Man of Steel mm -hmm. my only issue with the Snyder cut is that if he was going to continue down this grim dark path he needed to have a moment of hope before we keep going down the grim dark path okay. and he doesn't even really give us that in this Justice League, because it's like we get it, and then we go right into nightmare, and I'm like, ah, oh, oh, okay, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I, I, I would say that I love seeing the black suit, but in the end, when he was warning down the alley, it should have been the blue, because he was back, right. and he should have been. That one scene, that one change to me would have been almost the, uh, the victory, 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 hope that I needed to see. Okay. Because now I know from what he's said, what he's going, what he wanted to do. And like almost none of it was hopeful. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, you got to give the audience something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything is just going to be just like, oh my God. By the by the set by the end of the second Justice League, everybody would have been like, "No, nah, I can't do this anymore. I just can't. I just I just can't. Every it's just it's just too much. It's too heavy. I love the movie, but the the path that he started that he was going down, he needed a little bit more hope, and that's what I I kind of wanted to I I kind of wanted to I I I, I kind of needed a little bit more out of Superman being hopeful 
Oh, once okay. he was back. Don't get me wrong, he was a badass. But, yeah. <laughs> that was an entrance and a half. <laughs> badass. <laughs> Definitely. I'd like to expand on that a little bit in a second. I wanted to give yeah, Kat a chance to also uh, give her thoughts. I agree absolutely with what the other three said. I think um, I think I will touch aesthetically. Um, aesthetically, I think the Snyder Cut is far more cohesive. Um, watching, because I, I watched the Snyder Cut and then I watched the Whedon again and then I watched the Snyder again. Um, and one of the things I really notice is visually, there's a lot of moments in the Whedon film that are kind of unwatchable. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the whole end scene. Aquaman. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're Aquaman. Just, they're just what he did with the, the the color toning and and you know trying to make it more hopeful or whatever it was that Joss Whedon was doing, which I think he's supposed to correct. But um, the last scene, the whole scene in Russia is kind of it's so red that it's when you go back and look at it, it's like it's really painful to watch because the color is so stabby I think is probably the word for it um I think aesthetically watching the Snyder Cut it it absolutely becomes more of a visual uh painting you know there's there's a cohesiveness all across it. and and you know in in the continuity in the way that he put it back together and, and and the way visually everything is is a little more toned together um I think visually and aesthetically, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I think he absolutely did justice to what he saw originally and couldn't finish. Um, so yeah, I think it absolutely knocked it out of the park, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know, right before we started, uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, Zack Snyder's very unique style, visual style mm -hmm. of, 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 of all of it. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's in line, I think, with Zack Snyder's visual style as a director, as a filmmaker. Um, but particularly his approach, uh, beginning with Man of Steel, uh, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, it's very unique. There's so many superhero movies out there now. Uh, a lot of superhero movies out there look essentially the same. These really stand out visually. Um, and I think we all kind of agreed on that. Um, and I'm wondering, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, what, what you know, what are your thoughts about, you know, the representation of these characters um, in uh, in this fashion, in this in this visual style? Do you think you know, do you think that? In, in, and I guess in particularly, you know, obviously there are multiple different iterations of even like Superman going on. Right now. There's a new superhero Superman show going on right now on the CW, which is uh, you know a lot of fun and very unique, but a, 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 a different look. Um, and I'm wondering kind of like, what do you guys think about uh, Snyder's visual approach to these? Um, does it work? And like, do you think that this did a good job kind of building off of what he had done with Batman v Superman and um, Man of Steel, particularly just in tone? Because I know like you were talking about, Brian, you know, there's not much hopefulness in there either, but, you know, the tone is still consistent. And I think what's interesting, another good point, another point that I think that might have been a weakness to um, uh, Batman v Superman is that we had all this kind of uh, emotional tearing down of Superman, his em emotional conflict uh, on a global scale, but we never really saw him as a swashbuckling superhero that they implied him. That was kind of like something that happened before the start of the movie. Um, which may, may have been a good pl place to put that, but I guess kind of looking at the overall visual style, I mean, did it work? What were your thoughts, especially after seeing this epic four hour movie? We, I guess we can go in the same order or, or if someone wants to jump in. Um, I Aesthetically, I tend to really appreciate uh, movies or movie arcs that have a visual. I mean, you look at like the Alien trilogy, it has like, very gritty, very like, and I like gritty, dirty sci-fi, so that's you know, kind of my, my favorite kind of look. Um, and I, I appreciate directors who really latch on to a visual style and, and, and are consistent and um, pay attention to the details within their styles. And I think Zack Snyder is really, really good at that. Um, I think throughout his, his 
story arcs. They really um, been consistent. I think it works for the kind of story that you're telling. So, yeah. that's my two cents. Anyone else want to weigh in? I will. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, regarding the hope aspect of everything, while I know that Superman is literally the symbol of hope, it's written on his chest, that is what he is, and that is what he's always has been. The thing is, is, is kind of the nightmare scene coming into play here. Um, I agree that we, in the Snyder Cut, we weren't really given that little, like, light of hope that a movie would need for going into like a multiverse battle with dark side. Mm -hmm. But when you think about like uh, infinity war and Endgame, the end of infinity war had no hope whatsoever. We didn't know what was going on. They just poof, they're gone. Everybody's <laughs> gone. So the end of the Snyder cut, like even though Superman's still in his black suit, you know, that's, that's his suit that helps him recharge. Um, it's Batman that gives us that light of hope because twice in the movie he says faith and since when is batman ever right but it's that's the thing because he's the one in the nightmare scene who's looking to try to fix everything and we know very little about that nightmare scene is that real is it is it going to happen and dark side is on his way guys like he's he's coming in he is He's ready to throw down, and we don't know what's going to happen. I think it's Batman that is our beacon of hope this time. Interesting. And I love Ben Affleck for that, because I he is my favorite Batman, and I love the Batman movies. But Batfleck is, like, just where it's at. He's got the Bruce Wayne. He's got the Batman. He's got everything down. And he's just perfect. But I love how everybody portrayed their characters in the Snyder Cut. I think that everybody got the ability to come back and really make us believe that they were the people that they were playing. Cause we have a question from Emily on Facebook regarding yeah. that. Um, but like Cyborg, he is an angry teenager. L look at him, look at what he was forced to become. And we, we got to be reintroduced to the Flash and Cyborg in the Snyder Cut and who they are supposed to be as heroes. Yeah. And I think that everybody really reeled it in in the Snyder Cup for who they are as heroes. Um, like Aquaman kind of acts like he doesn't want to be a part of this, but he never said he didn't. Like he, he doesn't want the world to end. That's still his home. And then, you know, Wonder Woman just being the goddess that she is. God, I love her. Gal Gadot is just perfect. But I, I really think that that beacon of hope is coming from Batman this time. That's an interesting perspective. I agree. What you, yeah, what do, you, what do you think, Brian? I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I look at these movies as basically as Zack Snyder writing an Elseworlds tale. I mean, for anyone that's watching at home um, and anyone else that doesn't know, an Elseworlds tale is basically when a writer gets to just have carte blanche with the character and recreate them from the ground up. So, you know... Um, they, 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 you know, we had Superman land in Russia. We've had Superman land in the Wayne's backyard. We've had, you know, uh, I, I, all kinds of, we've got the whole DC universe get depowered. And I've, I, not from Man of Steel, but definitely from Batman versus Superman. As soon as we met this bat Batman and he was already like, 20 some odd years in grizzled and everything else. And I'm like, Oh, well, this is just an Elseworlds thing. I'm like, okay. Like I'm okay with that. And I, it's like, I said, I would have been along for the ride. I would have went to see every grim dark movie they put out. I'm just saying, I was just saying that I felt like to keep an audience that's not super acquainted with comics and things like that coming, we needed something a little bit, but you're absolutely right because I hadn't even thought about the way they were portraying Bruce and, and, and everything else because he was absolutely that symbol of hope that you, that I was talking about from from pretty much the beginning of the movie because his whole thing was redemption for what happened with Clark. Right. So and 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 realizing what Clark meant to the world and then finding out that through those nightmare scenarios. Yep, Clark means a whole lot more to the world than you're even thinking. Because without him, 
And without her, yeah. we lose the world. Absolutely. And that whole scene from Batman v Superman with, with uh, the Flash just coming out of the Speed Force and warning Bruce, and it was an ambiguous dream. They actually addressed that in the oh, Snyder it, Cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but that is uh, like it, the whole thing is, is it's, 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 it's with what he um, said is, is that was their first attempt to try and fix things, and he right. came too soon. And, and as he said, I, I, am I too soon? And he realizes we messed up. You yeah. know, it's, it, we missed it. When? Just now. <laughs> and so now they, you know, so what we're watching, what we were going to be watching is the actual attempt that works. Yeah. And so we would have gotten the hope, the hope, 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 hope. But you know, it, it, we had to, we still had to go through a very dark, dark period. Right. I love this movie. I am so glad it exists. I don't. I, I and 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 for the record, if we if we get to talk about it or even mention it, I I, I want I want Ayer's version of the Suicide Squad too. Like I actually think even if dub, even if uh, Warner Brothers and and I'll be done right after this. Even if Warner Brothers is not going to continue with the Snyder verse, at least release that air cut to finish off everything. Give us the true versions of the two movies that you literally just squeezed and messed up. Right. Yeah, That's all I had to say. Wise, this, the Suicide Squad could have had mm -hmm. Suicide Squad could have been amazing, but it, 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 exactly. Like, <laughs> and <laughs> he's even said it. The movie yeah. I made was great. It yeah. just scared the crap out of the out of executives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, the thing about uh, the 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 Snyder Cut is that it should not be watched on its own. No. It should not be watched on its own. You you should absolutely watch Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, and even Wonder Woman before you watch the Snyder Cut because ultimately. It's one story. Like, yeah. yes, it is broken up into parts, but it's, it's one story that asks the question, do we need Superman? And more importantly, do we need these heroes? Right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a great, amazing discussion that Zack Snyder presents to us. Uh, because realistically speaking, these movies are supposed to be set in our world, right? And that's and that's the huge difference between what's happening in the MCU and what's happening in the DCEU, is that the MCU is set in its own universe. It is it is completely separate from what's happening in ours. Mm -hmm. Aside right. from like certain historical events, that is its own thing. It's moving forward like that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Batman versus when it comes to all of this, the the DC universe, we find that we are presented with a population who is very much like ours, right? Mm -hmm. It's very divisive. It's very, we either see one thing one way or we see it the other, right? Superman is either a hero or he is our destroyer. Those are our two options, right? And we keep getting this over and over again. What is it going to take to get Superman to snap? What is it going to take for, you know, him to turn on us? And I think that moment of hope that you're looking for out of Superman doesn't come from when he is wearing his cape, but rather when he is wearing his flannel. Because that is what he puts on first. It, Lois hands him his, his Clark Kent shirt, that shirt that he, that he wore when he was working the fields with his father. The, the shirt that he wore when he was, you know, hugging his mother, the shirt that he will eventually wear when he is raising his child. Like that, that right there was the, the, the moment that really got me to see Superman for what he is, uh -huh. a man who is super. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a great point. And that like that that was that was that was the visceral moment for me that was the moment that got me crying because i'm just like mom <laughs> wife child mm -hmm. because here's the thing right during the battle with the justice league 
Lois stop Superman, right? Right. Lois, Lois stop Superman, no. Because there's somebody else there aside from the Justice League, aside from Lois, aside from Batman, and it's their baby. They did tease that a little bit, didn't they? They they kind of danced around that. They worked well, it, they on that. that. She's got the pregnancy test in the drawer, which I noticed the second time through. I forgot right. about that. Yeah. And Bruce, so and Bruce is says, it, is and it Bruce that congratulations. sees Lois and recognizes yes. her? Or does he recognize the new life inside of her? Right. Well, and that's one of the, isn't that one of the interesting things, kind of going back to uh, what we were talking about a little while ago, which is the way Zack Snyder makes his movies. This isn't something where you just sit, sit back, open your eyes, turn your brain off and watch it. These are very layered, yep. very nuanced stories that uh, we're just, let's, uh, to be, with all due respect, we are not getting these kinds of stories out of the MCU. We are oh. seeing what we see and we're seeing, you know, a very entertaining assembly line. These are very, um, uh, very, there's so much there to unpack and he doesn't hit us over the head with everything. You know, you have to really pay attention to what you see and what you hear in Zack Snyder's movies. Um, and I think it's, you know, uh, you know, I, I think that's a interesting uh, thing point you make Justin, because I think it's also very easy to watch this movie and not even pick up on that. You know, yeah. I, I didn't true. notice the pregnancy test the first time through at all. Yeah. You gotta oh, yeah. watch it's, all these it's, different it's corners. A, it's a moment, right? Yeah. And yeah. that, that was one of the things that I didn't like about Joss Whedon's cut is like Superman would want to see his mother. And it's not just, oh, Superman wants to see his mom. Literally the last time he saw any form of his mother were those Polaroids that Lex Luthor threw at his right. feet that said like whore and all these other like nasty things written on her face. And she looked all like, like could you imagine, could you imagine seeing a picture of your mother like that? and then dying, and then coming back to life, and then what's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do? Your you're gonna to wanna to hug your mom. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I can't lie though, I kinda of miss, see, and, and, and this is the thing, there was a couple of times throughout the movie where I was like, you know, they, I don't, I didn't like, I, I mean, it's not, I shouldn't say I didn't like, I did say I enjoyed it. There were parts that I was like, they should have left certain things in from the weeded. Like when she was, when he was hugging, listen, when he was hugging Lois in the Whedon cut, he hears her. He hears his mom before she gets there yeah. and says, you called her. I liked that. I like that she didn't just roll up. I understand. It's the same thing, yeah. but I like that he heard her way before she showed up. Way before we heard that, that rumbling of the car tires, I feel that he heard her. But and he probably did. It, it felt car. like he heard her heart. It felt like extra work. The, sh the scene had already been shot. Well, no, no, I, I, I know, but that's what I'm saying. I, I liked it from. I like that line from. The <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think my problem in general with the Whedon cut is that there is no subtlety, whereas with Snyder, there's subtlety. Oh, I agree. I, and I yeah. think, and I, I like, I, I get what you're saying there, but I think for me, you knew that Lois had called her. She, as soon as like he was doing whatever it was, she took a minute and called her and said, hey, you need to come here right now. Um, and I, and I, Whedon is <sighs> problematic at the moment, but he's <laughs> really good at you know, the quippy things and all of that stuff. And he's good at going, you like this, and this is the thing that you're gonna do. Um, but Snyder is, he's so subtle in what he does and the way he does it, that I appreciate that because it, it makes that story kind of evolve in a way that is is very satisfying. You, you kind of, you, you, can, you can kind of take these things in and you're like, you know that that's happened. You don't need that information because you know it's there and you can kind of see the flow of the story. And I think I appreciate that. Yeah. Does she, does he, I, cause I can't remember, does he actually at least just say mom or something? When she, when he walked no. up, yeah. He says Martha! Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I, he, he, you know, I think it was, it's something like hi mom or something yeah. along those lines. Like he does as soon as he sees her. Cause um, it's just that I, I, and I, I, I completely understand the subtlety thing. 
but it's I guess it's just a me knowing who super knew, knowing how Superman like actually works huh. that that he would hear her he would right. hear her whole okay. camera and then she and and I and that was the that was the thing about that line that I liked not that it was it wasn't the realization that he was telling the audience right that he called her it was it his happened. realization not only that that was the first thing that you thought to do was to call her and I love you for it but. I, I'm I'm hearing her, yeah. and she's not even here yet. Yeah. That that was where that was in in my head. So yeah. it, 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 like I said, it wasn't the whole I, the, the audience is so stupid. I need to tell them everything and 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 thing. It was just it was literally like sometimes I think Josh does that. So just yeah. remember during the scene, he is kind of like reprocessing everything. So I, that. yes, because that right. whole scene is completely reworked now. So he right. he's, he's literally coming back to everything so I, I i completely understand the rework and i'm not like i i like i said i missed the line but i wasn't upset with it because everything was reworked anything that i missed from the any lines or any moments because there was even moments that i missed but they weren't they wouldn't worked in the snyder cut and right. that's why i was like i'm like okay i yeah i'm not i'm like but I, i'll admit i missed the end credit from the Whedon cut, you know oh, the, the race that, between the Superman, Superman and Flash. Flash race. Yes, but oh. you know that was it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know <laughs> what? You know what? You know what? It's interesting, and I, I wanted to uh, uh, segue into that um, with respect to the Flash. Uh, Barry Allen and uh, v Victor Stone, uh, were, uh, the Cyborg and Flash, two characters that I think in this in this version were completely different. Yes. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there was talk before the movie came out that Cyborg was the heart of the movie. And when we, what we saw in 2017 was nothing like that. It was a compelling character, but nothing like that. He somehow was a thread throughout the entire story of the Snyder Cut. And the Flash was funny in the version, in the first version. But in this one, he was someone you could tell had been experimenting with the speed force and what a unique in version of the speed force compared to what we're seeing on tv um and you know they got a lot of really standout moments and i'm wondering what you guys think of how the um the the new things that were brought to, to brought to the story with respect to cyborg and flash how that enhance how that might have enhanced the the experience of watching that and after I t after we talk about that I was I would love to dive into uh, Steppenwolf and Dark Side because I think that's a great discussion in and of itself but yeah what do you guys what do you guys think about because I think those characters above all I think probably um, with a few exceptions you know like we've already talked about I think were characters that really changed considerably in this version so Cyborg um, Cyborg's always been an interesting character in the comics because he's not really a member of the Justice League, he's not really a member of the Teen Titans, but Snyder has straight up elevated him to new god status. He's basically a digital god, and I think it's an amazing uh, uh, like development in his character. I think it's a really, really clever uh, thing that he's taken out of the comics because like, for, for the majority of his history, he's just been like half man, half robot. But uh, since the since the new fifty two the, uh, the 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 new fifty two um, he they they've really kind of given him more of a more of a, a place on the league than in the Titans, which I think is great. And in in this iteration of him, they they really they really took it above and beyond, um, especially with this whole like this whole metaphor of man gaining the power of god and being like just flooded with all these new like ideas and possibilities and just abilities and just stops and understands that this power was meant to help those truly in need and finds someone who he can actively whose life he can just nudge back into a good place. Mm -hmm. And I just, I thought that was just phenomenal. And the fact Joss Whedon could even conceivably cut so much, so much, yeah. so much 
of Cyborg out of the movie was, you know, obviously we, we all know what they've been saying in, in the news and like straight up, it's petty. It's petty. You can't, t you can't sit there and tell me that you're a good storyteller and cut out that much of yeah. a good story. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just yeah. one of my favorites. Just, yeah. I agree. Um, sorry. I, I, didn't. I can't. Yeah. No. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite things that has, that is different from them is the, the, the relationship each of them has with their father that is so mm -hmm. much more flushed out. I mean, you, and with, especially with Cyborg, you, you get his like anger, but you get this whole redemption kind of arc with his dad sacrificing himself and, and, and that, that realization that there really was a love there. And then the love between um, Barry and his dad is just, it's such a sweet couple little moments that you just didn't get enough of in the, in the weekend cut. Um, I think that's probably my favorite part that has been fleshed out is that that aspect of their character they're not just these lone people that they had families that they, they still care about and that they're fully fleshed out characters in the in the Snyder Cut which you know you get these kind of half-assed kind of characters in this the, the Whedon verse uh a Whedon cut that that didn't have any hearts to them and I think adding that, mm -hmm. that back in it just kind of gave them a lot more heart and a lot more <clears throat> relatability and I love the father arcs in both of them. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. There's a lot of emotion. What do you, what do you guys think uh, about that? I, I personally felt like um, they, uh, Reading just turned uh, the Flash into a great comic relief. In, yeah. And when I'm scared of bugs. You <laughs> do. When, <laughs> When I when I when I started the fastest that, man alive is scared of a freaking insect. Come on, yeah. Let's yeah. let's be real. When when I when I actually started watching the 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 Snyder cut, I I and and I just saw what they were doing with the Flash. I was like, okay, so he's not a little in, he's not an incompetent, scared little kid. Like I I I I like this. Like he's still awkward, which which I was okay with. Like I, I, I personally think that he should be like. If you're gonna go with this version, let him be awkward. But I, he was competent. Like he knew he mm -hmm. knew what his capabilities were, and he wasn't afraid to use them. Yeah. And he, he didn't like. I mean, I, it, 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 it's just it. He had so much more agency in in, in this movie. It's like he wasn't there to just sit there and, and be in awe and gawk. And, and like I said, he was still awkward because he still did it. But that was fine because he had his moments. And then he was like, oh, well, time to do some stuff. And I'm like, well, look at you. Yeah, wait, I can do the thing. Yeah, this <laughs> but I, 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 still, I, still, I still have one issue with, 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 with Snyder's Flash. And, and, and it came across in both versions. And it's that he doesn't run. He skates. And and he does these like awkward things with his I'm sorry, like I ran track and, and, and it, like it, everything that he does is against the laws of like physics and running. Period. Like if even like and then there was a moment when he was running through the speed force and I was like I was like, Oh, he's Naruto running. That's awesome. <laughs> like it was like it was like right like it was like right when he was like, I gotta break the speed force. He was like he's like when I gotta break the he, he, he said. <laughs> and I was he's, like, he's kind of doing no. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, that was a real epic. You know, that's too. kind of the thing, though. But other than that, I loved what they did. That's with kind of the thing. Characters, I, I absolutely loved what they did with both of their characters. Victor, as you said, was the absolute heart of this film. He, he was a complete thread, and it made absolute sense with his connection to the mother boxes in the film. So for him to literally be connecting everybody and everything together, and 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 being in the end, the, the 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 way that they were able to defeat the mother box, like that that scene was first of all kind of creepy as hell. But oh yeah, with, with those women, witches thingies, but with the mother boxes, and uh, when he was uh, uh, literally, as as Justin was talking about, literally could touch everything in the world, 
and could later i had he could control everything literally like you said a digital god huh. and and the and the first thing he did was help someone who needed it and i and it was like it was also at that moment where he realized what he was supposed to be doing as well and i actually liked that because it, it, it was just there was just so much more character development with those two as opposed to look we're working with batman and wonder woman look we're trying to make them sexy look we're trying it, it just it it, it Aquaman, ogling that wonder woman awful sorry oh yeah <laughs> but it's so much better yeah christina do you want to weigh in on that too like with the um with the how flash and cyborg were handled with this yes um everything that they already said about cyborg is pretty much what i would have said the whole digital god he could take over the planet like that um and he because he has all the ability to do literally anything at just a thought but he doesn't because it's not right. And, you know, I applaud him for being such a good soul, for having every ability to do literally anything he could ever want, and just doesn't. Because what's the point? It's so easy to be evil, and he's still good, even in his anger. Um, so everything that they already said is just, it's exactly right for Cyborg. He is the threading for the entire plot like he he is part of a mother box like without that mother box he would not physically exist and you know he's the only thing that can break them apart and then flash is just as important because he literally has to reverse time twice in the movie once to touch the box at the right moment and then again at the end because oh crap, I got shot and I, I gotta go fast. And the Flash is always like, well, not always. I never knew who my favorite superhero was until I started reading more comics and I love Batman and I love the Green Lantern. I always have all my favorite villains, but the Flash is by far my favorite. There has never been a Flash that I don't like. His villains are wonderful. Every Bart and Barry and Bartholomew and Wally. I love them all. <laughs> and this version of Flash is no different to me. He is he's awkward and I'm super weird. So <laughs> him being super awkward, especially around these like people who are like gods to him, even though he's kind of a god himself. I mean Speed Force. He's just like, everything is so big and shiny and I love it here. That's me. Whenever you get to see me at a convention, that's me. <laughs> and so being able to like feel part of him as part of me i'm just like he's so weird and i love him stop being weird please <laughs> but <laughs> he he has to do these things that he promised he would never do because he knows it's against the laws of reality and he's like but everything's gonna end if i don't every footstep he takes brings back another step of time because he was just a second too late at the start. Mm -hmm. And without, without them, without Cyborg and Flash, the Justice League would not have succeeded what they did, even with Superman there, clearly. Because, like, everything got wiped out, even with Superman stepping in. Yeah. Um, and having their information wiped out in the Whedon, like, because... To my knowledge, not a single shot in the Snyder Cut was anything that Whedon did, right? Right, Justin? Nope. Yeah, right. So the reversing time things didn't exist in the Whedon Cut. Mm -hmm. Like, none of that was there. And it was kind of important because it kind of explains a lot of things that are going to start happening or could have happened. Because that, that kind of makes a second timeline sort of like there's a time frame in which everybody got killed and a time frame in which Flash brought them all back. Right. So we call that without... multiverse, by the way. Yeah, Just that thing, multiverse. Putting that yeah. out there. <laughs> what do you guys? But it's yeah. it's important that they got given what they needed, and after all of the nonsense they went through with, you know, I don't like to speak ill of people, especially with hard the hard work they've done and all the things that they have put out for us as nerds, and it's just 
it's in the news. He didn't do a good job handling these actors wow. and they, they got that chance to be who they were supposed to be. And I think they deserve yeah. what they were given for the Snyder cut. Yeah. yeah. Joss Whedon is the prime example of absolute power corrupts because that's, he's just, he's a misogynist and he's, yeah. he really didn't want to say it, <laughs> but I he will. did. So I, you know, I agree. I love Firefly with all of my soul. But, and it, and it breaks my heart that Joss Whedon has turned out to be kind of as problematic and, and, and unkind to his actors and actresses that he is. And it, it breaks my heart because he had the potential to be an actual Where'd she go? good person. And he, yeah. he fell, fell yeah. very short. And it's very sad. You know, so. Speaking of the villains, be right back. I think Steppenwolf and Darkseid, uh, Steppenwolf got a huge upgrade here. Oh God! Uh, almost unrecognizable as a character. Um, I was really reluctant. I was really nervous about how Dark Side was going to fit into the Snyder Cut. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, what do you guys think of Zack's ability to uh, throw Dark Side in there and make him a? Uh, I argue to be a very compelling force of evil without really doing anything. Um, but making Steppenwolf an actual force to be reckoned with, uh, this is a guy that could punch back. What we saw from Whedon's cut was a guy that is really <laughs> punched. I'm wondering, do you guys, what do you guys yes. think about that? I, I guess. Yeah, I'm, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> um, they, I, I think basically hit the nail on the head with everything with that. Um, that's that opening. Um, <clears throat> Steppenwolf in the first movie was, I don't even know how to explain it because, because of, because of the way that the story unfolded and the fact that they never explained his, the, like the, the actual real motivation of what he was trying to do. And the fact that he literally was walking around just calling out to mother all the time, it made it almost unbearable to watch anytime he was on screen. Like the, the, he just he, he he wasn't menacing, he wasn't uh he he, he he was just he was just there, and in this version, because of what they how they established Dark Side when they tell that story, and what you've actually seen of Steppenwolf up until that point, you're just like, okay, this is bad. Because he is not a he is not to be he, he is not to be underestimated. He is not to be just he's a force, like you said. He literally is a force, and because he actually comes off like that from the beginning, when they actually introduce young Dark Side, and you find out that this that he tried to take over dark side and lost and this man this thing is now in exile it puts so much more at stake especially when you know of everything that could that's that's already on its way with the nightmare future you're literally it, you know they're going to win and it's and and with because of the way the story is unfolding it doesn't matter because everything happens after this battle. This right. is what's going to change everything. And I absolutely loved that. They they made, they established a threat without, like you said, without him doing anything yeah. and established a threat level oh. with Steppenwolf. Oh. Right. I think Steppenwolf became a redemption arc versus just some dude. Like yes. there was a reason behind him, and he was trying to gain redemption. And he had a story arc too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just pretty compelling. Yeah. Um, Mother, you know, I think uh, uh, Justin, Christina, what do you think about the uh, Dark Side and Steppenwolf? Uh, how they were portrayed in this version? I didn't know a lot about Steppenwolf, so 
like when we're introduced to him a little bit in Batman versus Superman, I was like, whoa, that thing's kind of freaky looking. What's, what's that going to be about? And then, um, when we got to see him in the Whedon cut, I was like, this guy's kind of a pushover. Um, he didn't really seem all that menacing. I didn't really love the way they made his like design. And I don't 100% remember how he dealt with the Amazons to retrieve the first mother box. It's been since 2017 that I've seen the Whedon Cup because we saw it in theaters. I liked it. Like I said, there was a lot of stuff missing. And I'm like, I don't really want to watch this again. I need more information. What's going on? Like, there's so much missing. So we know I didn't see it. And then the Snyder Cut came out and I was like, look at all this extra information. But Stefan Wolf was not just a punching bag, although he got punched a lot. He could hit back. Like, he took down some stuff. He yeah. took down those Amazons like they were nothing, and they are strong women. Uh-huh. And, like, the the one thing I do have to say is I honestly thought it was really funny how he was just, like, dark side <laughs> the yeah. whole time, because that's how he is for him. <laughs> and then when we got to see Darkseid, like, when he showed up on Earth, you know, thousands of years ago and found the the anti-life equation on Earth, and he's like, alright, well, this is mine now, and then, you know, we sent mankind, gods, Atlanteans, and Amazons after him, and they owned him, and this is dark side. so there, this is like a time in which he's already taken down tons of other planets across the multiverse, and they owned him, but, like, I just, I, when we got news that we were going to see dark side. And even though she never spoke a word, the granny goodness was in the background. Yeah. Like, you even gave her to us? Like, that's amazing. And I'm just... Darkseid blew my mind. He, I know he didn't do a whole lot to the Justice League, but what we got from him from his past on Earth, I was just like, this guy's kind of a badass. Mm-hmm. Getting to see more. him on screen was just amazing. Yeah, it, 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 I think it really helped. Uh, it was interesting, too, having uh, having uh, uh, Darkseid be featured as much as he was. I thought, um, you know, it's unclear whether Zach was able, is going to be able to really continue this, so he might as well throw it all in. But you really get a sense of what was coming next um, with this. And... Um, kind of like uh, as we kind of wind down here I'm just kind of wondering uh, what do you I mean what do you guys think about the likelihood of, of seeing this continued the the, the 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 HBO Max release of the Snyder Cut I think correct me if I'm wrong but it seems to have gotten a really really positive reception and really uh, made its mark and do you guys think it will spur the franchise? to get picked up again or what would you like to see happen kind of as we finish up here so um i just want to go back for a second because oh, i yeah. didn't get to talk about no, dark side he, he oh i'm sorry cut my, out my, so. my ipad oh i'm sorry i thought you did difficulties yeah. it's fine but uh so i i think that people don't really know what they're looking at when it comes to dark side because dark side right they say it a couple of times in in the movie is from another universe. And when, I, when we talk about another universe, we're talking about, obviously, we're talking about a multiverse, right? So we've got our oh. circle here, right? And within that circle, you have all these different Earths. That's a cookie. All these, all these wonderful Earths, right? Uh-oh. Okay. Like, is there one with a, with a Zoom in it? as well somewhere <laughs> yes so here's the thing right dark side's not from any of these any of these universes he's from he's actually from outside of the multiverse oh. what's that say oh you're oh okay right i forgot about those what's that one? What's that say? 
So we've got heaven and hell oh. above and below us. And then we've got apocalypse and new Genesis. And this is where, this is where dark side is from. And that, that means a lot, a lot, a lot when it comes to the DC universe, because a, it establishes a multiverse straight up multiverse exists. Okay? They say beating, beating Marvel by at least, at least 15 movies. Steppenwolf literally says the word multiverse. Mm -hmm. yeah. He does. He does. And I think a lot of people are overlooking that because again, Dark Side's not like a normal alien warlord. He is a god. And by god, I mean the anthropomorphic representation of a concept. And in this case, th that concept is literally evil. Huh. Like, and I, 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 there's this awesome video that I will send to you guys later if you want it, that sure. discusses the concept of what that really means. And at the end of the day, the argument is, is that all things are inherently good. And the measure of evil is when it fails to live up to its inherent goodness, yeah. right? So arguably, any evil act, any evil thing, any evil, like, just any evil is being possessed by dark side. And I think that's, ooh, right? Like <laughs> Thanos, he's a big purple alien who wants to kill half the universe. Dark side believes that the entire multiverse is his and there's a mathematic equation to prove it right. and it's on earth the anti-life equation okay. mm -hmm. yeah. boom um yeah i think that's a great point man i, I that's that, that's you know dark side is the is the epitome of evil uh in in, in these stories and you know, he's, he's not just a a, a warlord tyrant despot megalomaniac he he is evil and 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 uh that's the that's the key thing i think we're at that hour mark i think we're supposed to keep this to like an hour but real quick i just would love to get kind of your thoughts about um where you'd like to see this franchise go next we've got it's it's really not clear yeah. but this has been a very successful release the snyder cut perhaps it we could see something of what should what what Zach was planning to continue. I, I'm wondering, what are your thoughts about that, real quick? Uh, starting with uh, 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 Cat. Um, I think you can never say never at this point. We got the Snyder Cut. Um, I would love to see more of his universe. I mean, it's dark and interesting and complex, and I think it would be amazing. I also want to say one little thing: the soundtrack so much better than the Snyder Cut. Yeah. I'm a big fan of soundtracks. So much of it. Um, but yeah, I would like to see I would like to see more um, of it. And I hope that this kind of shows that there is enough interest that maybe we will. I'm hopeful. Yeah. Brian, what do you think? Like like Kat said, anything is possible at this point. I I, I Warner Brothers is saying no, but they also said no before, so <laughs> Um, I mean, if, if if it keeps if it keeps pulling in money and, and stuff, I'm sure eventually they may hey, you know, we, we said we weren't going to do this, but, you know, we're going to do something. It'd be nice, um, especially with knowing what he had actually planted, uh, charted out, and, uh, you know, the introduction of Martian Manhunter at the end and everything else, like, that was really starting to get the band together for real, for real. Um, still need a Green Lantern. That'd be great. But I, I, I really <laughs> awesome. I, I really would <laughs> This stuff play out eventually um, in any way shape or form I, I mean if they decide Warner Brothers says they don't want to do movies to me it's give me some kind of a, a series on HBO Max or something I don't I don't care and Please. release the air cut yeah yeah <laughs> what do I, you guys think oh what oh I was gonna say what do you guys think oh I hope I really hope that Warner Brothers goes, okay, you can have them. Even if they want to do two lines, like they, they wanted to continue on with the storyline, like the, 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 the timeline or the universe that 
Whedon had created with his Justice League because that was the original, like if we had originally been able to get the Zack Snyder cut without anything that had happened and he had just stayed and we could get his movie the first time in 2017, that would is supposed to be their track. And then we got Whedon, so that's the line that they want to go with, and they want to keep making movies based off of that one. But I feel like there is nothing there for us to get more out of. There is nothing there. They didn't even... Did they even give us Dark Side? No. No. So they didn't even give us Dark Side. We don't know who the big bad guy is supposed to be. We at least knew at the end of Infinity War who the bad guy was supposed to be. The Avengers. Whatever. Yeah. Just indifference. Yeah. But we, we have that big bad guy. You can't have a group of these amazing heroes get together for nothing like stefan wolf was not the big bad guy obviously um and i just i feel like it would be kind of dumb on their part if they didn't just go with this and i understand that it's a lot to take in and they they got to be careful about what they do and making sure that they can actually just do it but i think this got a good enough feedback and, you know, so many people told the the DC fans and the, the Snyder fans, like, the Snyder Cut doesn't exist. It's like, does now. So just expand upon it. I think they deserve to have their work out there. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I keep glossing over you. I'm oh, sorry. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, directly tied into the industry in terms of, like, you know, I sell comics, I order comics, and blah, blah, blah. And the one thing I've learned over the last year, uh, ever since the pandemic caused DC to change their distributor, ever since the pandemic didn't necessarily cause, but, you know, was followed up by the announcement that the Snyder Cut existed, um, is that Warner Brothers really doesn't have a say. Because they're owned by AT&T, who have been pulling the strings for the last year. We, we know this with, uh, with the alleged DC 5G event that uh, eventually turned into what is now known as Future State. Uh, for those of you who read comics and know what I'm talking about, um, basically, they were going to do an event that you know celebrated AT&T acquiring DC and calling it 5G which was supposed to stand for fifth generation but obviously is a reference to you know the new 5G towers that are everywhere my cat's being weird um <laughs> but realistically speaking uh final say goes to AT&T and the only reason the only reason we got the Snyder cut last year is because AT&T acquired Warner and then ultimately made the decision to release it against Warner's wishes, which is very clear uh, based off of their their response to everything. So it's it's really uh, they got caught, you know, not doing a good job, and now they're like, "Ooh, what do we do?" But ultimately, um, <laughs> it's AT and T's decision. And they can still clearly work off of what we were given in the Snyder Cut. Nothing about Aquaman really needs to be changed. Nothing about Birds of Prey needs to be changed. Nothing about 84 needs to be changed. Like, there's nothing that we couldn't go forward with except for potentially the, the Black Adam stuff. But allegedly the rock really really wants the snyderverse restored that's just a rumor i have no <laughs> actual basis of fact other than people have reported this and the rock is like pouring money into warner and dc so they don't want to lose that money obviously money talks yeah. that's where i'm at on it i hope we get uh the snyderverse i don't expect it to be snyder's original view because obviously we've already added some elements we've got we've got shazam we've got black adam we've got uh potential zatanna movie coming out etc and they did cancel a couple of upcoming things they canceled the trench and they canceled the new gods right. which means that what they were going to present to us doesn't jive with what they want to do going forward so maybe maybe just maybe we'll get it 
That'd be nice. We just have to be a little more lenient as to how we get it. Because, like, everyone's like, restore the Snyderverse! And I hear you guys. But... We got a little. <laughs> there's there's a certain <laughs> amount of restoration that is realistic. Yeah. Like, give Zack Snyder Man of Steel 2. Give Zack Snyder a Batman movie. Give him Justice League uh, 2. And, and you know a nightmare movie God's give him four sake. movies give him six movies i, I don't care but Batman. you know <laughs> <laughs> there's we've already got like some stuff set up and it's not necessarily affected by the whedon cut so i feel like we can still go forward and bring that stuff in and not kind of ties make into it what too i weird. said like when yeah. i said like the whedon thing made its own like timeline of movies but none of that other stuff needs to be changed to continue yeah. on with the Zack snyder Basically. cut because it all ties in to both just fine it just goes like this right i think you don't have to change anything to make it work obviously to go further forward they'll have to change a little but not so much and I just mm. and really, this is DC's bread and butter, man. They've been doing this since 1985 with Crisis on Infinite Earths. You just take a bunch of different stories and different timelines, smush them together, make a story, and right. go. Yeah. They just <laughs> did it again. They just did it again. They just did it again. Death metal. Exactly. Death metal. That's my whole. Life. They literally just did oh. it again. I'm just like, okay, okay. I got like three of those on my shelf. Yeah. Right. Like every every five years, there's a new crisis that just kind of like resets the continuity, but makes everything make more sense. But not really. But at the same time, it does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I promise uh, you, comics. maybe. <laughs> well, I think well, I think uh, you know we got to go a little over. That was that was great, guys. This was an awesome discussion. We barely scratched the surface in over an hour, of course. Well, it's true. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, we just need to watch that movie. We need to ramp up the clicks. And absolutely. I, I know personally, we need a, a Man of Steel sequel. Yes. yes. Another Justice League. Batman movie. Uh, Batman shit. versus Deathstroke. We've got like all kinds of Batman movies happening. So why not? You know, let's just. So. Um, Thank you for everyone for watching. Thank you everyone for talking with me about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Let's talk about it all day, every day, because it's <laughs> the best. So uh, with that, uh, I guess we'll sign off. And thank you again for everyone for tuning in. And Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye. It was a blast.